Hey guys, it's Mrs. C, and I am here to do another uh, algebra tile lesson with you, but this time we've already been adding and subtracting in class uh, algebra tiles, and I think we have found the subtraction with the algebra tiles can be a little bit saucy. And so I thought, you know what, let's take it a step further. While it's saucy, let's just let's just add some spices, why don't we? Because right now what I want to do is I want to do some area problems with you. And I know for some of you, you either love geometry or you hate geometry. So hopefully for all the haters out there, I'm about to change your mind. So let's, well, we don't want to do black. That would be tricky to see, wouldn't it? Let's try this. It's a rectangle. All right, so here's my... Here's what I want to do. I want to ask you a couple things. First of all, do you remember how to find the perimeter of a rectangle? We did that before with, with some more problems. You add up all the sides. That's right. Now, that's true of pretty much any polygon or any figure. You add up the sides, if, if they have sides, and you get a perimeter. But how do you get area? Area was a little bit different. Now, area for each polygon changes. The formula, the, the one for rectangle, is length times width. And so if I gave you a value for the length and I gave you a value for the width, you'd be able to calculate that for me, correct? So let's just see. Let's run a, a couple. Here's a warm-up. Are you ready? Oh, no. Sorry about that. I will get it. How about six units by five units? What would the area be? Drum roll, please. It would be 30 square units, right? Or 30 units squared. Let me try something else. How about if I gave you 6 and just said L? Length. Not going to tell you. Not going to tell you what L is equal to. It could be equal to anything. It's ever-changing. It varies. So I'll give you a variable. So what would the area be represented as an expression? 6 times L, right? Can we do that better? 6L. Now you'll love, for those of you who always got points taken off because you didn't label your units, you don't have to when you have a variable. This unit squared, that's just confusing. So we don't do it. Okay, so alright, what if I, I can keep going here. What if I gave you two variables? How would you handle that? What if I said, let's say I said A and B, what would the area be? The area would be A, B, A times B. All right, I'm going to add to it. What if I said the area was two A's and three B's? What would the area be? B, 6, A, B. You're just multiplying. Gonna do one more thing to you. Change the A's and B's. Change the 3's and 2's. What if I told you this was width and this was twice the width? Now think for a minute. You've got to use your laws of exponents, right? Because you're multiplying like bases. So what is W times 2W? Well, it's a 1W, right? So the 1 times 2, that gives you 2. What's W times W? You know it. W squared. So the area of this rectangle would be 2W squared. Okay, now, you're probably wondering, didn't she say that this was an algebra tile activity? Yes, she did. So here's what I want to say. I want to continue on with that thought process, but I'm going to change it to letters that you're familiar with when we're working with the algebra tiles. I want to change it to, let's say that this side is x, and let's say that this side is... I don't know, 2x. Now you're thinking to yourself, 
yourself. That's like really close to the problem you just did. Yeah, it is. It's just x's instead, right? So how do you represent that as an algebra tile problem? That's going to be the question. How do I actually do that with algebra tiles and use the algebra tiles to get an answer? Well, you know what? I'm here to show you exactly how to do that. But I'm moving to the next page. So let's say again I gave you a word problem and it said the width, the length of a rectangle is twice its width. So if it really was true that the length of a rectangle, that the length of a rectangle was twice its width, I'm trying to actually do that in my head. The length of a rectangle looks like it's double the width. How do I do that as an algebra tile? Not as an algebraic problem. That's the hard part you guys are having. You're trying to, to actually downshift and come up with a way to represent this, even though you kind of already know how to do the math. I caught people in class that were trying to actually write an algebraic expression and simplify it. No, I want you to do it this way. So how do we represent this here? This distance from here to here, pardon, this distance from here to here, let's represent it as an unknown. Let's represent it as x. Now, uh, do you happen to, by any chance, remember the shape of our x's in class when we were using the tiles? They looked like this, right? That was my x tile. Now, it's twice that length. And remember, it said this distance, the length is twice the width. So don't I need two of those little x guys? I, I believe I do. So let me go ahead and try this again. Here's one of them. And, you know, here's two. And technically they should be the same size and sitting next to each other, but you get the basic picture. Okay, so I have set up the situation to represent the problem that we know is 2x, 2x, and x. So this is a rectangle whose width is actually half of its length, or its length is twice its width. It's really basically the same thing, isn't it? All right, so now let's look at the inside of this rectangle. Now the inside of the rectangle is the area, right? All the stuff inside, isn't that how we learned it? So what shape would have the same distance from here to here, which would be x, right? And what shape would fit here, which would be the x? What shape do you have that is the same on all sides? You got it. It's our x squared, so let me put that in there. This guy that we have that's an algebra tile fits right there, fits an x on the top and an x on the side. And look on the other space, this one would fit right in there. And so you would actually be able to complete this rectangle, fill it in using your tiles. This would be an x squared, right? And this would be an x squared. Now, if the area of a figure is all the stuff on the inside, that's how you learned it when you were little, right? All that stuff on the inside. How much stuff do you have on the inside? Well, you have two x squareds, right? You have two squares and, and you have two x squares. So your final answer is two x squared. That's the area of a rectangle whose length is twice its width. Now, let's try another one. This time, I want to give you the rectangle, because this is how you're going to start off. I'm going to give you the rectangle, and I'm going to give you the, the setup. I'm not going to give you a word problem. I'm actually going to tell you. I want you to multiply two numbers together. I want you to multiply um, x times oh, I don't know, let's say, oops, hang on a second, x plus 5. 
And you're going to have to represent that for me as an algebra tile. So let's just think about it. Think of it as a rectangle whose width maybe is x and whose length is x plus 5. That would still be the same thing. And so let's take a look at our rectangle and see if we can pick the appropriate shapes. So we have an x, and I think I'll put that on the smaller side, and it should look something like, oops, went the wrong way, didn't I? This is an x. That's the only thing that fits on that side. And then on the other one, I'm supposed to have an x plus 5. So let me go with my x. Squeak, x. And this is the tricky part for me. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. They have to fit, but they don't. Let's pretend they do. So they're all next to each other, and they fit right up to that edge. So now... Tell me what would fit in this first space here that has an x by an x. It would be the x squared, right? Now, what shape would fit in underneath all of these little units? Well, it's whatever shape has a, a width of a unit and a length of an x. And that would be these guys. They fit perfectly. One, two three, four, <laughs> five. You get the picture. <laughs> all right. And so, had these all fit beautifully, what would be the stuff inside? This is an x squared, right? And these are all x's. Oh, I want my cute, my tiles would be so much easier right now. Add it all up. Tell me how much stuff is on the inside. What is x times x plus five? It is x squared plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 x's. And that's the answer. The answer to x times x plus 5 is x squared plus 5x. Unbelievably awesome, isn't it? So cool. Let's try one more. Can you represent... Let's go to it. I think we're in need of a color change. Can you represent... Um, I don't know, like, let's, how about, how about 2x times, um, I want to give you a quantity, x plus 3. Now, can you, x plus 3, can you represent that using algebra tiles? Now, you don't have a, a, a board such as mine, and so maybe you need to sketch this on paper. Believe me, it's easier to do if you sketch it on paper than you try to use these tools. So pause for a second and then come on back and let's see if you represented it properly on the board. All right, guys, let's, let's do this. So if we are to represent the 2x properly, now I'm going to go to smaller, a little smaller because you can't keep making your board gigantic just because the problems get a little bit bigger, right? Um, let me change the color of the boxes, too. On the little side, I'm going to put the two X's. And I always start in the wrong place. Here, along there, and then another one like that. Those are my two X's. And then, on the length, I need to have X plus 3. X plus 3. 1, 2, 3. All right, now I don't think I have the capabilities. Let me see. I'm trying to figure out a way to shrink this. Will it let me? Nope, it's not going to let me shrink this. So just because I need to, because I it's a, it is supposed to fit. That is more representative, isn't it? I think so. So let me just... There, I feel much better now. Okay, so have I represented it properly? The two x's are here. And my x plus 3 is right there. An x and three little ones. Let's fill the space. Now, the only space that would fit an x by an x is going to be the x squared thing. And I know that's not a square. I'm really glad you visually see that. Just go with me for a minute. 
And then who's going to fit here is going to be one of these guys. And then here, another one of these guys. And then here, another one of these guys, right? But under here, we have to repeat the process because there's not one X. There's two X's on the left side. And so that is how it would actually do it if you maybe say you used graph paper and you actually counted how many blocks you were using. Be very, very careful. That's why we do use pre-made tiles because when we draw them, we have a tendency to, you know, possibly could you have done this because you weren't thinking and filled that shape in. That's not proportionate to how the tiles are created. The tiles are only X in length which means they will sit right next to one of those squares. So you have to keep that in mind when you actually freehand these shapes. And so let's, there's the fun part, let's tally it up and see how much we've got. Well, I have an X squared here, an X squared here, an X, an X, an X, an X, an X, and an X. So the total of X squareds are two. I have two X squareds. And how many x's do I have? I have six. Final answer, 2x squared plus six. I just want to connect the dots for you before I finish. I want you to look up to the original problem. The original problem was 2x times the quantity of x plus three. Right? That was the original problem. Now, I don't want you to forget that I already taught you, I think even teachers before you, taught you how to multiply a binomial, that's this guy, to a monomial, that's this guy. You just didn't call them monomial and binomial. You multiplied a thing on the outside to a thing on the inside that had two terms, and you used the distributive property. You always did. So what is 2x times x? That would be 2x squared. And what is 2x times 3? That would be 6. So yes, you are supposed to use the distributive property. Algebra tiles show you what's actually happening. So please understand this. Algebra tiles require understanding. They help you see why the abstract actually works in a concrete form. So if anybody's confused using algebra tiles, that's exactly where you're supposed to be. It's supposed to shake you up a little bit and make you think. So we're not done making you think. There's a whole lot more of this, and there's a whole lot more of it coming. There's more kinds of fun to be had. And so come on to class, and I'm going to give you the algebra tiles, and you're going to have some fun making rectangles and finding areas. I will see you guys on the flip side.